Hey guys, today I will be finally talking about the Leica CL, the only APS-C camera with L-mount and a viewfinder. I will go in detail, describe the main features and try to answer the big question. Is this camera still worth it in September of 2021? So without further ado, let's get to it. And if you are new here, my name is Peter Guardian, I like to take photographs with all kinds of cameras and lenses. And on this channel, I am sharing with you my experience with uh, the gear I have used, related tips and even an occasional travel story. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. But if you have been on my channel before, you've probably seen my video where I unboxed this camera and spoke about my reasons for buying it. So if you haven't seen that video, check out the link in the description. But let's move from boxes and packaging to the Leica CL itself. As I said, the camera was released in November 2017 as an alternative to the most sexy camera ever made, the Leica TL2. It shares the same 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, but otherwise is different from TL2 by focusing on physical controls and presence of an integrated viewfinder. There was a film rangefinder style Leica CL released back in 1970s as a cheaper alternative and a gateway to the Leica M cameras and so I guess uh, Leica saw the digital CL in the same way. Chances are if you like the CL you will want to get an M in future. But I digress. The digital Leica CL got only its designation from its film predecessor but the design is inspired by the Leica 3G. You can tell that Leica designers wanted to pay homage to the legendary Leica 3 series which was very popular for its small size and weight. And small and relatively light is also the digital Leica CL. I say relatively light because the CL is heavier but not larger than for example the Fujifilm X-E3. But weight of CL is not a problem, quite the opposite, it gives this solid hefty feeling when you pick up and hold the camera in your hands, even without a lens. Just the weight itself speaks of quality and a quality mate this camera is. The way it feels in hand, material is used, a tactile feel, all buttons and wheels, it, it just feels like a camera should feel. You unpack it and immediately know this is a quality mate product that you can rely on and a product that you don't want to abuse. This could actually be a negative because I didn't care much for my X-E3 bumping into things and getting scratches, but this piece of clever design and uh, precision engineering is still too precious for me. Something I need to get over, I guess, because in the end these are tools that need to be used. And to use this camera, you will need to understand its unusual controls. But before I go into it, let me go back to the camera design. I told you that the Leica CL got its name from one camera and its silhouette and size pays homage to another one. That is true. But the design of controls, button layout and menu system came from the first full frame mirrorless camera Leica has ever made, the Leica SL. You didn't know that, right? Just compare the top plates of the two cameras unmarked dials, informative LCD and viewfinder that sticks out. So this is actually a mini SL in a rangefinder style camera body. So now to the controls. If you are a Fuji shooter like me, you are used to having dials on top plate of your camera. But here the dials are unmarked. This was the one thing that was putting me off of buying this camera for a long time. But after using it for a couple of weeks I understand. Of course everything is adjustable, but in default settings the left wheel controls exposure compensation and the right wheel controls your aperture. Because the Elman Leica lenses uh, do not have aperture rings, uh, pros and cons of this are for another time. So uh, the left wheel changes exposure, right wheel aperture, that's in aperture priority mode, which is something most people use most of the time so you can very quickly and easily control the most important parameters of your photographs. To change ISO, you just push the button in the middle of the right wheel, yes, these are buttons, and use the same wheel to change ISO. Another press of the button and you are back 
controlling aperture. It sounds complicated, but in operation, when taking photographs, it's very quick and easy to use. I got used to this style of shooting in about 30 minutes, uh, but if you want to do something else, things get a little bit more complicated. Push the button in the middle of the left wheel, oh, here, and pick a shutter priority, for example. Now the exposure compensation is on the right wheel and the shutter speed on the left one. And at first glance it doesn't make sense, but think about it. When in shutter priority you are probably shooting a fast moving subject, so you set your shutter speed high enough, you do that once and then what you need is to quickly adjust exposure and boom boom boom, take your photographs. So it makes sense to have exposure compensation on the right wheel, uh, where it's easiest to control. Uh, then there's a program, automatic and full manual mode. The Leica CL can also record 4K video, for which there are two modes, a program mode and a patch priority mode. And everything I just described can be easily controlled by the two wheels and two buttons in the middle of them, including ISO. And you don't have to remember which wheel does what because it's always indicating on the big screen and at the back of the camera. Good feature is the ability to lock the wheels by long press of the left button. So let's say you are on a holiday and someone offers to take a photo of you in front of this amazing attraction. But you are in the Apache priority mode and um, are used to adjusting exposure by looking at histogram and who knows what this other tourist knows about cameras, right? And even if he does, uh, it took you two hours to understand how to control this thing and your partner wants to go and get an ice cream, there's no time for anything. And that's okay because you have the Leica CL and all you have to do is push the left button, select automatic mode, long press the same button to lock it in and hand over your expensive Leica to a complete stranger. <laughs> Chances are he is an honest person and you will get your camera back including a decent photograph and because you are shooting into RAW, you know it will be more than decent given how amazing the APS-C sensor in your Leica CL is. Yes, the sensor is really good. Its highlight and mainly shadow recovery is impressive. More so when you remember the camera was released in 2017 and has the same sensor as the Leica TL2, released even a couple of months earlier. I don't know who made this sensor for Leica, if it was Sony or Panasonic, and how much tweaking did Leica engineers later uh, made when uh, creating firmware for this camera but for a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, this is more than most people will ever need. It certainly applies to myself. Combine it with Leica signature colors, sharp and contrasty lenses, with well-controlled bokeh and you have a package which picture quality can be only surpassed by a camera with larger sensor combined with a better glass. And even then you will be hard pressed to find a difference in most day-to-day -day shooting scenarios pixel peeping aside, of course. Which leaves me only to think out loud about what I expect Leica will bring in the rumored CL2. It will certainly be a better viewfinder, not because this one is bad, far from it. I actually like it more than the one in X-Pro3, which up until now was my all-time favorite. I even preferred it to the large one from X-T4. Uh, the viewfinder in the Leica CL is not bigger, but it's nicer to look at. It's hard to describe, but I see everything, the whole scene, including all the necessary information around, and I see that comfortably, even with my glasses on, which is the first for me. The CL2 will have a better viewfinder, but only because technology has moved on since 2017 and things like resolution and refresh rate are now on a much higher level. Leica will also include IBIS. And I know the camera is small, but if Ricoh can fit a 3-axis IBIS in such a small package, then a premium product like Leica CL2 can have one as well, a better one. They will not make the camera with a tiltable LCD, they will be against their uh, policy of making sturdy, long-lasting products. They will add a joystick, which is something uh, I used a lot on my Fujifilm cameras, and that will allow them to ditch the 4-way controller making the back of the camera even cleaner. They will not add any ports and will keep the camera looking exactly like it is now, nice and clean. 
but they will release accessories allowing you to connect a microphone and other accessories necessary for recording videos. Overall, it will be a pretty amazing camera that will retain its high price tag. Do I miss any of these features? Not at all. The Leica CL will continue to be a strong performer for many more years and chances are it will become a sought after compact digital camera like it is now for example the Leica Q. And if not, the better for us, the photographers on budget who cannot afford a Leica M10 but want to know what is the famous red dot about and why are their cameras so sought after and praised. And how do you see it? Are you interested in the Leica CL? Or do you own one already? Let me know what you think and what is your experience. I am very interested to learn from you. Some of the best tips and conversation is happening in the comment section, so definitely engage down there and be part of our growing community. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you appreciate it. Like the video and let me know about future videos you might want to see. And remember, there are show notes in the description. Have a nice day and I will see you with the next one.